Hey, this is Daniel Amp, and you're watching the Mike Wolf YouTube channel. Keep it locked in, man. Hi, I'm Dan Lawrence for the Mike Wolf YouTube channel, and we're with Daniel Amp, a Christian rap artist. Where are you from, Daniel? So I'm from Mount Vernon, New York. Mount Vernon, New York. Wow, that's uh, that's that's like a pretty laid back uh, little town, isn't it? So it, it is. It's, it's three miles long, but pretty exciting. I think all all, all the the best people come out of there. <laughs> okay. Well, uh, obviously, my first question is going to be like, what kind of got you in this to Christian rap, maybe some of your inspirations and things like that. So yeah, so so um what's funny is I didn't want to do Christian rap at all. Um I actually wanted to be a pastor. And uh when I felt God calling, um I kind of gave pushback. Um because I really didn't know there was a such thing as doing Christian rap, well, right? Can I ask you real quick how old you are? So I'm 30. You're 30. Okay. Yep. So whenever I got saved when I was when I was 23. Okay. So, so, <laughs> <laughs> um, so high five, right? <laughs> so I got saved and um, I really just I didn't have a desire for it. And I think what started to happen, like with all things, right, is uh, you get saved and you have a desire to serve the Lord. Um, and sometimes we have our preferences of what we want that to be. Right. And, uh, that was definitely mine. So when God was calling to music, I just had to be sure, you know, um, because I think the bigger question for it was, um, did I want my preference to be primary right the priority or did I really just want to serve the Lord in whatever capacity he was calling so with God drawing because that's what God does right he drew me into it and then uh, a lot of fight from my part right but then eventually um, surrender and then just watch God go to work um, and all the things that he he was doing um, and uh, it's been kind of a glorious ride and uh, uh, influences um, so I listen to a whole lot of, it, it's everywhere for me from, um, I listen to Lauren Daigle. Um, there's a guy named Stephen Malcolm, uh, Lecrae, obviously when I, when, when I first got saved. Um, so there just a, a couple there. Toby, I met, I met Toby, Toby, Toby's cooling down to earth. And yeah, I love Toby. I love Toby's heart. And, and I love that Toby's ministry focus. Right. And it has a desire to impact people. So, yeah, no, definitely, Toby, just just people who are about the mission and, and who love who love music and, and love ministry. Okay, you were talking during the concert that this is the first leg of this court current tour. Can you want to talk a little bit about some of the other towns you're going to hit? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we'll be. This 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 is this is the first uh, stop of the tour, um, so Pennsylvania. So we we have uh, other stops coming up, um, a few stops in Ohio, um, uh, Florida, um, Maryland, and in Delaware. Um, for and and then we'll obviously you know we'll hit the the New Yorks, the New Jerseys, and things like that by God's grace. Um, but then after that, we're planning to gear up and then. Um, on the second leg of the tour, head out west to to hit some of those cities there. So I'm excited because it's it's my first headlining tour. So okay. and uh, excited to actually see people come. Right. <laughs> I was going to ask you that if this was your first tour. Uh, yeah. So it, it's as a yeah. So it's my it's my first headlining, and uh, like I said, it's, it's exciting. I think any time as an artist where people actually come out to support you, it's it's like wow, you know that that you can look at the Lord and say, especially me, right? So for, for something that I didn't want to do at all, and then see God just show up and and just be present in a vast amount of ways that I didn't expect. Um so I, I think that's always that's always pretty awesome to watch, right? <laughs> now I I noticed like before we did the interview we were 
talking to some of the folks out there by the merch table, and uh, you were telling stories about what your main mission was for this tour. Can you elaborate to our audience a little bit about that? Yeah, so I think so often, right? So concerts are, are great. But at the end of the day, they're concerts, right? Um, and I think the most impact happens in, in when we do this, right? When we're able to communicate and I'm actually able to address um, maybe some concerns, some doubts, or, or some joys that, that you have, right? So everything happens in real time, right? Whereas when we're doing a concert, we're there they're alive, but I'm not really tangible, right? Um, so what I wanted to do for this tour, um, especially, is I wanted to be that. I wanted to be accessible to people. And my desire is to communicate and to share my heart and then to know others. Hey, how do we uh, live out our faith? How do we grow in Christ? How do we apply um Christian values every day when you know living in the world I work nine to five you work nine to five how do we actually set those core values and live in such a way that pleases God and still impacts others while dealing with the struggles that we have the doubts that we have so literally on every stop of the tour we made it the the VIPs are literally kind of like like Bible study small groups. So instead of doing, hey, let's take pictures, let's do that, I wanted to say, hey, let's sit down with each other. Um, Let's talk about the Lord. And this morning, I mean, it's about 25, 30 people there. So it's with that setting, just being able to be intimate and then share our concerns and our doubts and then say, okay, I understand that. Let's walk through that together. What does that look like? So that's pretty much the heart behind the tour, and that's why it's called Fan the Flame, pretty much. Now, it sounds to me like while you're doing it, both of your thoughts of ministry are coming about. You said you wanted to be a pastor first. You're kind of being a pastor before and after the concert, and then, you know, you're still getting to— relate God's word before and after the concerts. Right. Hindsight's 2020, right? Yeah. All right. So um I think being young, right, you can't see it, right? You're 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 like Well, there's a lot of distractions when you're young too. And and so it I I had to learn doing performances. I'm still doing what my desire was, right? right. So I'm getting I'm still getting to stand up with people and say this is what the word says. This is how we navigate. And I still get to be relational. So I think that that literally just came with the first time that I got up there and, and somebody literally, here's a story. So I'm in Michigan, right, at a festival. Um, and I go and I, and I go through my set. And um, I won't name drop, but an artist that had just toured Winter Jam was there. Watched my set, and uh, he comes to me and he says, "Hey, Daniel." He's like, "Man, it's almost like you're a pastor doing music." That's and exactly what I was thinking. And so when he said it, I was like, "Huh?" And he's like, "He's like, I'm not kidding." He's like, "The shows are great. They really are." He's like, "He's like, but when you stop and you start talking about," he's like, "Literally." before you hit the last song and you start talking about the faith and how to live it out and and walking in such a way that pleases God. He said it's literally like you're a pastor that does music and he's like you have you have that kind of heart. So I think it was then when I started to kind of say like man, that's kind of what I wanted to do anyway. So now how do I incorporate that in my set continuously to where somebody's hearing the gospel you know so i mean that's that's what's important for me and uh that's that's kind of like what drives drives all this right the important thing too this style of music really relates to the kids a lot and i'm willing to bet that there's a lot of kids out there that 
like hip hop, like rap, but yeah. haven't really heard the word of God yet. But they're going to hear it at one of your shows. Yeah, yeah. So our our whole thing is that is like right. We always say right. Um, it doesn't matter when you present the gospel, present it. So what what we always want to do is hey, if you come here, we're gonna give you a dope show. We're gonna we're gonna make sure that it's energetic, that it's hype, that you leave here feeling like you had a good show. But we're also going to make sure that the gospel is heard and that you leave here at least thinking about, Think about it, yeah. what does this look like? If Plant the seeds. If, if absolutely. Because what I really want and my desire is, right, if this is really true, right, if the gospel is really true, then what does that mean for me? So that's what I want everyone to leave. If you don't leave with anything else, if the gospel is true, how does that affect my life? If Jesus really came and he really lived and he really died, how does that affect me? And and how does that for how does that make me live? What what does that what does that do? What is the result of that? Um so that's what we push at all the concerts and you'll be shocked how many people come after and they're like Hey, I got this question. Yeah, it was just like tonight. Do you have a gang of people out there that you were talking to about your testimony and your life and everything and all that after this concert here? I've never seen, I mean, I've been to a lot of concerts here in Somerset, and I've never seen a whole gang of people just surrounding the artist, listening to them talk about their testimonies and with how God is influencing their lives. Yeah, and that's kind of like been our story, right? So like we're going to 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 shows and that's kind of like what prompted the tour actually is that we were going to concerts and people were saying, "Hey, I had this question, I had that question." And like I said, I just wasn't it, it's really hard at a festival and you know this, Daniel. It's it's hard at a festival to have a 20-minute conversation about the things of the faith in application. And so when we were trying, it would be things like, hey, Daniel, you got a line at the merch table. You know, you got you to gotta go sign some autographs. Hey, Daniel, we're about to go and get ready for your performance. And it always seemed like it was in the middle of conversation whenever we're address, addressing a concern. And at, and at certain places, you can't kind of stop and say, hey, you know, give me give me 10 more minutes the person you were talking to probably thinks no oh, this this guy is not genuine he's blowing me off he has to go you know? right and, the, and but in a situation like this they know you're 100 percent genuine yeah because because you get to you can you can access me you're able to come up and say hey daniel we waited out here for 15 minutes just to meet you and we wanted to talk about some of the things that we heard you say so on the tour i'm actually able to say hey i'm here for however long that you need me to be here let's talk while i'm here and even though that's not a long-term solution right it's still what i believe provides a temporary support for a need that needs to be met and then maybe what the cause, right, could be is that it. Your call. Yes. So you can maybe you then go out and you say, OK, let me maybe seek wisdom from other godly individuals about some of the things that he said. Like maybe it becomes a domino effect. Like, let me let me pursue this a little bit more. He said this. Let me pursue this a little bit more. Maybe I then go get plugged into a local church. Maybe I end up doing something like that. And and so that's where I want this tour to kind of lead people. Yeah. OK. Uh, before we close, uh, notice during the concert, you were talking about an upcoming recording you have is the is the uh studio stuff all done you're just waiting for a release or tell me about that yeah so so third studio album um by the grace of god right uh and we're we're finishing up on on uh just just putting the finishing touches on on what we believe to be a really good album um very different from my other two um but 
this one's called eviction notice and the heart behind it was hey i just got to get some things out i got to get some things off of my chest um pertaining to the world and pertaining to the church it's like i i just gotta i just gotta speak about a couple of things and um we we thought it was a very clever way and felt like it was divine from the lord that whenever eviction notice became the title because it was like hey when you get evicted what do you do you're getting things out and so <laughs> so they were like so when when everyone heard the project they were like wow this makes sense why it's called eviction notice it's you don't have any personal experience with eviction notices <laughs> <laughs> by the grace of god i do not <laughs> um but yeah so it's like i said i think it's it's a really it's a really different project more creative i think than i've ever been um but it's got to be you got to be more specific when you say different yeah so so when i when i say different so i'll I'll say this i would say expect to get very honest honest music expect to get um music that challenges you to to live in such a way to think about the now and not to think about tomorrow it's not it's not going to be one of those deals where there might be a little doubt if it is a christian rap album <laughs> is there 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 will be there will be no no argument whether it's it's christian or not okay. so you'll definitely know that it comes from that's what scares me sometimes when you are say ah oh, we're going to put something different out now <laughs> so i think we we can't be scared of of what's different right so we got to as I will say this because this is one of the things that that I say actually touch on. Say it's more from your heart, would you say? Yeah. So it's it's I I got challenged a whole lot about just both sides, right? For um, us being being Christian, seeming like we're shrinking back a little bit, um, and happened in my own life, well, right? It's becoming more of a challenge these days, isn't it? Yeah. What yeah. And in the fact though that that we have to think twice about being bold about think twice about hey is it actually okay for me to be a believer at this moment is is one of the things that kind of prompted me to say okay i got to talk about a couple of things like we got to have it's kind of like this like we got to have a talk me believer and then me non-believer we need to can we have a talk about some of the things and about how we see some of the things and it's me being uh honest being vulnerable being open but i think it's going to create great dialogue okay uh is there anything else you would like to relate to your listeners before we close out here yeah so uh what i would say is um live live today is the day of salvation i say this to everyone um every every day right so don't put it off um come to the lord know him and then if you guys want to connect with me um daniel amp music uh the website all social medias so that's daniel amp m-u-z-i-k yeah okay and that's it for tonight we're with daniel amp from mount vernon new york christian rap at its finest Hey, this is Daniel Amp, and you're watching the Mike Wolf YouTube channel. Keep it locked in, man.